And Have I am Laura show. Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle coming to you from Washington tonight. The mainstream media really wants you to think that what you see right here is not a mob. I wonder what they said about the Tea Party. Hmm. We'll remind you. Also, President Trump promised a border wall, and House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy is trying to make it happen. Well, they better do it. He joins me later in the show on what he saw at the border just today. And Raymond Arroyo has, well, he got a lot of attention for last Friday's fall, seen around the world, even from some Hollywood heavyweights. Was it an accident or was it staged? We'll explain in Seen and Unseen. Plus, the devastating aftermath left in Hurricane Michael's wake. We're going to monitor that throughout the hour and bring you any important updates, so keep it right here. But first, what they're teaching our children. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Remember the old Graham Nash song? Teach your children well, because their father's hell did slowly go by. Beautiful song released in 1970. It kind of became one of the unofficial anthems for the anti Vietnam War movement. And Nash has even updated the song for a new time to cover the women's march, anti gun marches, and President Trump. Teach your parents well, their children's hell will slowly go by. Oh, isn't that sweet, kids? That's what you're supposed to think of the president. So, what are the kids actually learning lately from the current band of protesters? Well, one of my sons stopped to look at the TV on Saturday. We were all watching the Kavanaugh vote, and he saw the live feed of some of the chaos outside the Supreme Court. Like, what's that? He asked. And are they even supposed to be doing that? He was reacting later to scenes like this and video of senators being cornered in elevators. So I tried to give an explanation that I thought was appropriate for a 10 year old and said something like, Well, those people, Dimitri, are angry about the Supreme Court and the man, friend of mommy's, President Trump chose as the next justice. And he kind of said, Oh, he scrunched up his uh, little nose and said, Can't we watch something else? But it made me think a lot about this. The Kavanaugh battle has brought out the worst in the Democrats, and our kids are watching. Rather than re-examine their tactics following this seismic defeat, liberals have decided to go even lower. And by the way, it's not happening just in Washington. In Minneapolis, a special education teacher identified in reports as Samantha Ness was placed on administrative leave for tweeting the following. So who's going to take one for the team and kill Kavanaugh? Wait, the first offense is that the teacher doesn't know the difference between the possessive and uh, the contraction for who is. Well. The genius followed up with this. Brett Kavanaugh will be dealing with death threats for the rest of his life being on the Supreme Court. I doubt my Midwest, A word, is the real threat. This is someone entrusted to shape young minds? Well, she's since resigned. But I wonder how many others are like her out there. Maybe they're not tweeting, but they're doing other things. And how about this marquee outside of a South Charlotte middle school in North Carolina the other day? It read, you can see it there, kind of, F. Kavanaugh. It was apparently created by some leftist vandal. Well, what an uplifting message for the children to absorb while being dropped off at school. Totally disgraceful. Something's changed since the Kavanaugh confirmation. There's a desperate, far more unhinged nastiness on the left that we've seen as well spill into the classroom setting. Remember, universities excuse, excuse class absences for cancel Kavanaugh rallies. And that was preceded over the past year by marauding bands of frenzied leftists who were out there vandalizing and destroying historical statues. Well, just because they could and because they suddenly found those statues offensive. And of course, we had the celebrities feeling totally free to threaten the life of the president. I have thought an awful lot about blowing up the White House. When was the last time an actor assassinated a president? And if a celebrity dares to give voice to a different political viewpoint, like Kanye West, well, he's ridiculed with words that would get any conservative on television either boycotted or most likely fired. 
Kanye West is what happens when Negroes don't read. Um, and, and we have this now, and now Donald Trump is going to use it and pervert it, and he's going to have somebody who can stand with him and take pictures. It's hilarious. No, it's disgusting. Doesn't the left realize that our children, they're watching this? That they're teaching them that the cruder you are, the more violent you are, the further you will advance your agenda, the more attention you'll get, the cooler you'll be considered. The sad thing is, these vicious liberals not only don't care about kids, they use them in an attempt to score pathetic political points. I had almost forgotten somehow about this campaign during Trump's immigration policies. Let's watch. Screaming, get out of my country. Republicans use offensive words. So here's a few of our own. Racist. If you don't like our constitution and what it stands for, get the out of my country. Now some have faulted the president for his, you know, surly lines at rallies, promising to knock the hell out of a country or telling a protester to get the hell out of here. I get it. That's fine. Criticize him for that. But does that really have the visual power of something like this? We believe that we will win! 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 We will not forget! We will not forget! We will not go back! 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 And that could just be the beginning. Democratic leaders from Maxine Waters to Cory Booker have advocated more harassment and aggressive get in their face of tactics over the recent days. And now former attorney general and Democratic presidential hopeful, perhaps, Eric Holder is adding his voice to the hateful chorus. When they go low, we go high. No, no. When they go low, we kick them. what this new Democratic Party is about. Well, I agree with them. That is the new Democratic Party. And I fear that this language and this persistent anger factory we're seeing, the chaos of the left, is going to get someone killed. Almost killed Steve Scalise last year. On my radio show today, Senator Chuck Grassley, of course, the chairman of the Judiciary Committee, had a message for Democrats. Public officials, and, and I, I'm not a perfect public official, but I think we all ought to set an example of civility. they got a responsibility to renounce it. I'll say, and by not renouncing it, by not denouncing the mobs, the methods, and the mayhem, the Democratic leadership is tacitly encouraging more of the harassment and more of the intimidation. Remember all those anti-bullying PSAs the Obama White House did? Well, now the Democrats are the worst bullies around. Children don't listen as closely as they watch. So what will they take away from scenes like this? Yeah. Look at it. Doesn't even look like it's... Look like it could be somewhere in the Middle East during some terrorist event. And while the heat of this political moment will pass, if we really want to teach our children well, we all better get back to the basics. That means values like respect, decorum, and civil discourse. And that's the angle. Joining me now is Dan Bongino, former Secret Service agent and author of the new book, Spygate. And also joining me is Rochelle Ritchie, former press secretary for the House Democrats. Rochelle, let's start with you. What will the Democratic response be uh, if something horrific happens because of the anger and the frenzy both congresswomen, senators, and others are either tacitly encouraging or actually encouraging with their words. Well, Laura, you know, you mentioned that someone might be killed as a result of what we're hearing coming from the left, but I want to say that someone already has been killed as a result of what's coming from the right, and that's Heather Hare. And really, the hypocrisy that we're seeing coming from Republicans right now is killing objective thinking. The inability of the GOP to think objectively and to hold themselves to the same accord as they hold everyone else is literally a, like a plague that is spreading throughout our politics. If we think that people banging on the doors of 
of the Supreme Court aimlessly. Um, you know, it was kind of ridiculous, I will admit. But if we think those people are a mob, then we should also think that the people that Do you spat encourage on that, Rochelle? Do you, is, that, is that what you actually consider to be civil protests or what we saw with Antifa in Portland? Uh, uh, first preventing of all, I don't a car claim, or harassing an elderly American holding up a go Trump I don't claim. Sign. I don't claim Antifa, and like I just said a second ago, I thought banging on the doors of the Supreme Court aimlessly was a little bit ridiculous. But also keep in mind that Congressman uh, Cleaver was actually spat on during the Tea Party movement from people who were angry about Obamacare. So that is Well, who this, was encouraging this, that? Yeah, who was encouraging that? No one was encouraging was, that. No Republican said, get in their faces, go out and harass them, go to restaurants. Well, Dan Bungino, well, you I'm going to get you in on this. We you were had encouraging that, people to do yeah. that. That never happened. There were, Dan there were, there were, but no, we'll there we'll, go ahead. Yes, yeah. there were. No, there, there were. We'll get to it. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to note that what Rochelle just did is really gross, um, and I want to call her out for that um, immediately. Uh, what happened to Miss Hire in in Charlotte? I didn't interrupt you. I'd appreciate if you'd let me speak. It's the right go thing ahead. to do. We're trying go to be ahead. civil, correct? Okay, thank you. Now we are. What you did was grotesque. What you did was quite gross. Um, the Republicans, Donald Trump, and conservatives have absolutely nothing to do with a deranged, murdering maniac who runs a woman over in Charlottesville. That is gross. President Trump denounced that immediately, and you bringing that up in the context of this is disgusting. He said it was good and bad people on both sides. Right, Rochelle, you tell you why don't you just take over the debate? Go no, ahead, you can because go you're ahead. the civil one. Go ahead. Go oh, ahead. thank you. I'm allowed to speak now. Okay, I, yeah, I thank and I'm you. I appreciate respond. your permission there. So let, let him say something, then you can respond, Rochelle. That'll be fine. Okay. Go ahead. The point okay, is, well. what you're doing is you didn't answer the question immediately. You distracted everybody by going to Charlottesville, which the Republicans denounced. And then you had to fabricate another one that uh, uh, Cleaver was spit on. He was not spit on. We're making that up. Those stories about what <laughs> oh happened during gosh. the Obamacare debate are completely fabricated. Okay. These are nonsense events. You were asked a simple question about if you should denounce violence on the left and you made it about something else other than answer the question which frequently liberals do Rochelle <laughs> well I'm just gonna respond by saying this first of all that story is completely true um, it was you know, I, I, would, don't, I, don't I would wanna, encourage like going back into Cleaver and the speech well, let's try to keep it because we have limited time let's keep, okay. keep it focused to what's happening right now because I think we all do care about what kids take away from this whether it's a kids in an immigration video saying F the mm -hmm. president, putting up their middle finger, or whether it's people going up to individuals with their children or their family, their wives or husbands in, in, in a restaurant and screaming them out of a restaurant, it is incumbent upon both Republicans and Democrats Agreed. to stand up and say, no, you will not do this. We don't, we don't countenance this. And when, when Eric Holder is out there saying, we'll kick him, I mean, Michelle Obama actually said, when they go low, we'll go high. Mm -hmm. And apparently Eric Holders is like, no, we're not going to go. We're actually going to kick them and maybe even worse. Who knows? Well, I think you can't, it's really... You can't be for that, Rochelle. Oh, absolutely not. I, I definitely don't think that you should um, assault anyone. But I also think that we have to remember, and if people go back and look at what Eric Holder said, he followed that statement up with saying, I don't think that we should do anything illegal or inappropriate. So I'm taking this kick them as kick them out of the House and kick them out of the Senate come November. But is that how things are shared, Dan, on social media? Going back to the way young people consume media, what are they going to consume, Dan? You know, Laura, I, I, I just can't understand why the left just can't simply admit their people make mistakes and say really dumb things. Now Eric Holder was talking about kicking them out of the house. and That is not what he said. I mean, no, you I just said it, Laura. No, I just that way. Oh, my God. Uh, uh, you, you, I you know what? Just something, stay guys. over the whole debate. Go right ahead. I want to play, play something really quickly. This is from Rand Paul's wife, Kelly, after, of course, a lot of this chaos out there. She said this back on October 8th, just a couple days ago. Let's watch. There are so many, frankly, unhinged people and unstable people out there. And when they hear someone on their side telling them, get up in their face, they take that literally. Because of the violence that Rand has experienced in the last year, it does scare me that there is going to be somebody that is really unstable that takes that message a step further. We've updated all of our security systems at home. We, I sleep with a loaded gun by my bed. Dan, final thought. Yeah, I mean, he, 
He was attacked. He, he had broken ribs. He apparently is coming down with frequent cases of pneumonia now. I mean, these are real cases. These aren't fabricated cases like the Sarah Palin pack with the bullseye pictogram uh, to raise money. These are real cases of leftist violence. I just wish the left would step up and say, hey, this is all wrong. We condemn it. Maxine Waters, Eric Holder, Hillary Clinton, tone it down. It's not right. Uh, both of you, thank you so much. We'll have you both back. Fantastic segment. And the type of mob violence we've been seeing from the left, it's nothing new. In fact, this has been around since Ronald Reagan was governor of California in the 1960s. And he had his own way, though, of dealing with the problem. Joining us now with insight, it's important to get some, Reagan biographer, presidential historian, Craig Shirley. Craig, I've been dying to talk to you as, as the temperature is rising. Now, you get the sense, especially with social media, that's a big difference between now sure. and back in 1969. People are able to coalesce in a place really fast and you know, assault people in public places, either verbally or otherwise. Uh, but how did Reagan deal with it and how might we learn from that? He, Laura, he deal, dealt with it with a lot of wit and grace. It was, I remember one time during the uh, Vietnam War, he was confronted by a smelly, malodorous, uh, dirty, disheveled hippie. And it may have been Bill Clinton, for all we know. <clears throat> but the hippie was carrying a sign that said, uh, make love, not war. Reagan looked at the hippie, and he looked at the sign, and he turned to an aide, and he says, you know, from the looks of him, I don't think he'd do either. <laughs> so he had a way of... He had, one time he was in his uh, he was in his limo in, in Berkeley again. There was a group of unruly uh, uh, students out there, anti-war protesters, and uh, they were making a scene and making uh, you know making themselves obnoxious. Reagan got a piece of paper and wrote on the piece of paper and put it up the windshield, and it said, "I'm selling my bonds." <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God! He had a way of dealing with these things by you know by turning humor. To his advantage, which can be a great asset in American politics. Yeah, I mean, you've seen Trump in recent days at these rallies. He's actually been extremely funny, but at the same He's time, been very good. But at the same time, it's 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 a different environment media-wise. The media was against Reagan, hated Reagan was president. Yes. But there's something different about the way the the clips on social media are shared. But I do want to play something for you. This was from 1969, and this is um, in a public meeting with the Berkeley. Administration during all of the chaos on campus. Let's watch. All of it began the first time some of you who know better and are old enough to know better let young people think that they had the right to choose the laws they would obey as long as they were doing it in the name of social protest. Boy, is that appropriate for Brilliant. today's time? I mean, what are we teaching the sure. kids? You can you can trash something, pull down a statue because you don't like it, uh, give the you know middle finger to the president because you know. Someone gave you the lines to say? He, he broke it down to its elements, to its components, and he revealed what was really going on there, which was just, it wasn't about social justice, it was about creating injustice. Look, this is the essential difference between the Tea Party of some years ago and the protesters of today, is that the Tea Party was defending institutions, the protesters of today are trying to tear down institutions, and that's the essential difference between the two. Yeah, I mean, I think the, uh, you've heard from some of the individuals who've gotten in the faces of these senators, and they say they want to they want to take it all down. There's a piece in the Huffington yes. Post today by one of them. They want to take it down. They, it's not about a, a winning a, on a, a particular point or even a Supreme Court seat. It's about taking down the entire framework, which is just fomenting injustice against various mm -hmm. minority groups We're in their view. Mm -hmm. We're witnessing the 21st ver uh, version of the uh, French Revolution. The French Revolution, as you recall, was about tearing down all institutions in France, destroying everything, marriage, contracts, money, government, property, everything, in order to achieve what they called at the time social justice. And that's what the modern left uh, uh, anti-protesters, Antifa protesters about, is about destroying all fabric of society in order to start over and everybody supposedly starts out on an even uh, playing field. Okay, I'm hoping we hide all the guillotines at this point. Craig Shirley, thanks so much for joining us. And when it comes to what constitutes a mob, well, the media, they have a simple formulation. As Craig just alluded to, GOP Tea Party protests in 2009, a mob. Antifa-like tactics from the left now, not a mob. The video evidence when we return. The American people when a mob is or isn't an actual mob.
I will answer your question that you asked her. Is it mob behavior? No, it's not mob behavior. Thank you. It's people who are no, upset and they're angry not. with the way the, the way the country is going. It is Thursday, the 6th of August, and here are the top stories right here in the CNN newsroom. Democracy at work, or is it mob rule? Angry protesters disrupt health care town halls. And here's Chris Matthews of MSNBC performing the very same time warp trip. President's Republican allies tried to channel their supporters' outrage over protests into a winning issue by casting Democrats as an angry mob. Town hall meetings on health care are turning into mob scenes. Noisy, angry, vengeful crowds are shouting down members of Congress. Well, the clear message is uh, when a GOP crowd shows up, it's definitely a mob, even if they're wearing, like, period garb. But when liberal activists accost senators in elevators and scream folks out of restaurants, they're just voicing their opinion very forcefully. I see. It's very easy. Joining me now, my friend Richard Goodstein, Democratic strategist and former aide to the Clintons, and Byron York, uh, Fox News contributor and correspondent at the Washington Examiner. All right, let, Richard, let's start with you. Do you at least admit this is a massive double standard? I think what was happening... Around, yes, Laura, what, I do. What was, I, what was happening around the Tea Party was people... We heard about the spitting incident, whether it happened or not. They were objecting to having more people get health care. And now what people are objecting to no, is babies in cages. They're objecting to the fact that women were being degraded by the president in his own rally, degrading somebody who came forward who said that she was, you know, kind of assaulted by Brett Kavanaugh. Somebody standing up for their First Amendment rights of speech and assembly. And, you know, I guess the question is, I think people get into public life like senators. I don't think their skin is as thin as you're, su you're suggesting they are, that when people get in their face, they can handle it. They've seen worse. They've been local officials, most of them. I, I don't think this is something that was novel. So, so, it's, right. it's almost as if, now that President Trump is using the word, it has now become a forbidden word in some places of the media. I think you need to separate um, different kinds of actions. Uh, there are big protests in Washington all the time, and they're not. Yeah, the mobs. March for Our Lives was very. So, the March for Our Lives was just, you know, it, there was no no problems so there. It was a lot of people showed up, and no have, problem with it. If you have a group of people who are trying to intimidate certain people, who are trying to shut down a public building like the Hart Senate Get office, get in their faces, who are banging on the doors of the Supreme Court, or who are stopping people like Ted Cruz or Kirsten Nielsen from having dinner in a restaurant, I think that is mob-like behavior, and it just is and the fact that so many now are denying and it's not just CNN and MSNBC you're seeing it in newspapers as well it's just not true well if the word hold on the word words not allowed or it's it's looked at in a different way today I think you're right about that let's watch another series of examples of how the word was used back in 2009 at the height of the Tea Party let's watch Desperate Republicans and their well-funded allies are organizing angry mobs. This mob activity is straight from the playbook of high-level Republican political operatives. They have no plan for moving our country forward, so they've called out the mob. Corporate lobbying groups are doing their part. They're turning out the mobs. Mob scenes at town hall tea party events. Are we free or are we slaves under conservative mob law? So... <clears throat> Let's see how successful, here's, here's how successful that on. was. Here's how successful that was. All this mob talk, right, had Barack Obama lose 63 seats in 2010, yeah. right? We're not arguing and, that. I, and all I'm just saying is what, what Donald Trump and his supporters are trying to do is it's MS-13, it's Maxine Waters, it's Hillary. Lock her up, incidentally. It's everybody around Trump that's getting put in jail. And, and well, somehow or other, the, the mob now. It's Rich, the mob. Richard, see, when you say stuff like that, it, I mean, you're such a smart person. Everyone around Trump's getting locked up. That's well, just not, not everyone. true. I'm sorry. A lot that's of people. Of a, that's like the a, classic pundit overstatement that fine. we just kind of got to get. Okay, but a lot of people around. My, my point is. A lot of people. My, my point is that this whole mob thing is now the enemy. That's the other, right? And I don't think we're going to ride that. I don't think you and your supporters are going to ride that no, we're gonna to ride. election day. No. I think the mob that, that Donald Trump has to worry about are the, the mobs of Democrats showing up to vote. That's the mob he has to worry That's about. That's a nice turn of phrase, but it kind of avoids the point we're saying. I think the point that a lot of conservatives are concerned about, and maybe an independence, given the reaction to the Kavanaugh, is that if they're going to do things like they've done to Joe Manchin, take his money away, uh, even e even others who are, are not supportive uh, in their own party, what are they going to do when they if they get power back? I mean, what what type of punishment 
will be lev levied against others who don't agree or who, who don't agree with the social construct they want to foist upon America. Well, they might try to remove Brett Kavanaugh from the Supreme Court. Uh, I think there's the Republicans have, have gotten onto something here, and it's because of what we saw in the Kavanaugh uh, battle. And they are, I mean, how many times have you heard Democrats in the past describe Republicans as extremists? And now look at what's happening. President Trump is talking about the Democrats being extremists. There are mob actions. They're going to take your Medicaid for goodness sake. So Republicans think that they have found a new theme to use well, 27 days before the well, election. I think it, it's all about turnout. Richard's right about that, turning people out. And I think the Democrats are very good. They have a lot of money to turn out people to vote. Hollywood's helping out. I don't know what that ultimately will end up at. But they had a, a lot of anti-Trump mojo. The Republicans needed that unity. They yep. didn't have it before. They have it now. I want to play something that um, was released from the Melania Trump interview with ABC about uh, women and survivors and who needs to be heard. Let's watch. I support the women and they need to be heard. We need to support them and, you know, also men, not just women. We need to show the evidence. You cannot just say to somebody, I was, you know, sexually assaulted and, or you did that to me or because sometimes the media goes too far and um, the way they portray some stories it's it's not correct it's not right but a lion was going to emerge in the backdrop there in kenya it was a very visual city uh she's been she's been like filleted by mostly the left for saying that because like this tweet response by uh, Paige pate um university of georgia law professor victim's testimony is legally sufficient evidence uh, by itself to convict someone of sexual assault no other evidence is required uh richard she was obviously saying making a reference yeah. without getting into it with Brett Kavanaugh, something 36 years later, no corroboration contemporaneous. But, like, she gets treated so differently than Michelle Obama in similar settings. Michelle Obama could say anything. It was like, oh, my God, the, the queen has spoken, which is fine. People like she was a great mom. She was a great first lady. A lot of people loved her. But she is just getting hammered for this type of statement. Do you think that is fair? I think she represented the country beautifully in Africa. Honestly, it, it brought tears to my eyes the way that she was Yay! kind of... But, okay, if you but. Were married, if you were married to Donald Trump, oh, you'd have to on. excuse away uh, that kind of behavior, too, because of the dozens of people that have come forward with accusations against him, many of whom are actually litigating him. So, of course, if you were married to him, of course you'd have to act like, well, it doesn't really count, because otherwise you'd, you'd leave him. I'm sure that's the way I, Hillary would have reacted, right, given all the allegations? Okay. I think many Americans would just agree with the simple statement is, yes, you should listen to someone who is pressing an accusation, but there should be some evidence to support it, too. Yeah. I think that's just self-evident. When people say, my truth needs to be heard, there is objective truth. That sometimes we have to think of what is objective truth. Uh, gentlemen, thank you so much. And coming up, this is what a CNN commentator said about Kanye West just last night. He's an attention whore like the president. He's all of a sudden now the, the, the model spokesperson. He's, he's the token Negro of the, of the Trump administration. This is ridiculous. Candace Owens will join us later in the show with her reaction to that. I don't want to miss it. But next, Seen and Unseen with Raymond Arroyo will unveil the reality behind this moment from last week. Accident or comedic gag? Stay there. It's now time for our Seen and Unseen segment, where we explore some of the big cultural stories of the day. Now, in a moment, we'll dive into political American Music Awards. But first, last Friday's segment with Raymond Arroyo went viral, made international headlines. We call it Fallgate. It became a social media debate. Was it an accident or was it a comedy bit? For answers, we're joined by Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor and New York Times bestselling author of the Will Wilder series. Raymond, you... What? Uh, this is ridiculous. This is We're talking about a ambulance chaser no, lawyers no, no, no. out I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have this moment because I want people to know the reality and the truth of oh, this. God. Tens of millions of people watched this viral video. They saw what happened. Those two gentlemen over there who you haven't met, that's Mr. Biddle and Mr. Billingsworth. Those are my attorneys. You'll meet them oh, after really? the show. Oh, I shoot I want you, I'm going to show the audience the, ev uh, the video of what happened last week. No. Now, I want you to keep your eye on Laura Ingram's right hand. Watch what happens. Roll the tape. Smile. 
Do we have it? Wait, yeah. oh, no. the no, angle. Go to the edge. Wait, wait, the angle. Go to the edge. Oh, oh. oh. The ACLU used to care about the rights of accused. You threw me down in such a cruel fashion, heartless. My, ha cold my hand ice. slipped a you little bit. You pushed me no. with great vigor. I saw it. I'm going to slap you with a per. Oh, God, this arm. Oh, the plane I'm going to hit is, you with a, a personal firm? injury. What do they take? 40%? Uh, they're they're going to take 50%. Your kids will be paying my personal injury claim when I'm done. Okay, everybody saw this, including James Corden, who tweeted out I can't stop watching this. Members of the audience, they saw it all, too. One said, oh, my God, are you okay? Ingram Engel, someone let us know, please. Then another viewer, oh, my God, I freaked out and laughed. I'm sorry, but it was funny, and at the same time, I, I was going, holy, mm, I hope it was fake. Well, now we can tell the truth, Laura. Well, how long have, the, have you been <laughs> cooking up this? First of all, that that brace you bought like at CVS an hour ago. Leave okay? me alone. And we're, and to, and was, we're not expensing this, that either. This was not this was not fake, but it was staged. If people were watching the segment, we we had the segment on dangerous selfies and these oh beer God. protests at the beginning. We were just entertaining. But here's the problem: is that people, people, I mean, people like, oh, Laura is so cold in her response. <laughs> I was trying to stop myself from laughing. Okay? Well, you did see but, the video and evidence. I mean, it was. Are you okay? I, I'm I'm getting better. Okay, yeah, okay. Just the American Music Awards were on last night, Laura, but it isn't the music people are talking about today. After Taylor Swift's weekend Instagram, where she announced her support for Democrats in Tennessee, the whole industry is now getting in on the act. This is Billy Eichner. Watch. Tonight is the final night to register in 20 states in this country. Please grab your friends. Tell them to vote. If you believe in equality for women, that's right. For people of color, for the LGBTQ community, you can go to vote.gov like Taylor Swift told you to. Yes, thank you. And go vote. Now they're all political pundits. Everybody's got a political axe to grind. Oh, isn't it nice? I, 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 I don't even this. know who that is. I, well, I watch Billy these people. I, he's Billy on the street. He attacks people I thought people it was Billy Idol. I'm like a little more interesting. No, well, no. That's, white that's, Wedding. That's a, a white <laughs> Wedding. No. That's a, <laughs> that would have been like cool. He's got Billy a residency Idol. in Vegas, so we'll go see him next Okay, time. good. But my problem is the conjoining of entertainment with politics. People don't tune into these music award ceremonies for politics. Taylor Swift also had to jump in, and she had to give her two cents when she uh, received her award. This award and every single award given out tonight were voted on by the people. And you know what else is voted on by the people? Is the midterm elections on November 6th. Get out and vote. All right, Taylor, shake it off. Oh, she, yeah, shake it off, shake it off, shake it off. Again, she keeps, I hear that she song keeps one more beating time the drum. <laughs> okay, before we go, before we go, we have a, a, you, I think what you need, Raymond, Yes is an emotional support animal to get through this difficult time. Apparently, a woman on Frontier Airlines yes. got booted from the plane she because did. she brought an emotional support squirrel. And I, I, I was I was sorry she didn't bring the tree along with the squirrel, but they threw her off the plane, threw everybody off the plane, brought the Orlando police in. They it ended up delaying the thing by two hours. And Laura, because of the trauma I endured here last week, I did bring an emotional support animal. It's, I don't know if you can see this. It's a small mouse. Rat. It is a rodent. It's a but rat. I'm going to leave it for you. Oh, thank you, thank you. An emotion. The problem with that is the acorns <laughs> really mess up the gunk up the oh, engines right. on the plane. Look, I mean, the... Why would you bring rodents on a plane? All right. Not, I don't even like not, the dogs on the play. I, I used to call the squirrels Gray Gray when I was little and give them little Ritz crackers and peanut butter. They would come up to me when I was little. I still have Gray Gray. I don't want to hear what you're I'd, I'd rather sit next to a squirrel than some of the people I saw flying this past weekend with their underwear on, okay, not even thanks dressed. Thanks for the pain. I'll, no I'll have problem. my lawyer check in with you. All right. Well, we'll, we'll knock you off next time harder. Thanks. Trump voters have been wanting this since he was elected. It's now being introduced in new bill. Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy is here next on the border wall proposal that he has for us. You do not want to miss. Stay there. Could this be the breakthrough Trump voters have been wanting? Well, House Majority Leader Kevin McCarthy introduced a bill earlier this week that would fund President Trump's wall on the southern border. But it's got to move fast. If this bill passes the House, it would have to go through the Senate with 60 votes to avoid a filibuster before January. Could that possibly happen? The congressman joins us on that and his trip to the border today. All right, Congressman McCarthy, great to see you. If this were to pass the House, and that's a big if, 
How does the se Senate have any stomach or the votes for this? Well, I don't think the question is if it will pass the House. The name of this bill is Build the Wall, Enforce the Law. So it fully funds the wall at $25 billion, but it even does more. You know, Kate's Law, which we passed, is a part of this. Stop sanctuary cities. It keeps children safe because it removes the MS-13 gang members. And it denounces this movement, like in San Francisco, that allows illegals to vote in our election. But I watched what McConnell just said today. He said we're going to have a vigorous fight over the wall in December. And watching what this Senate was able to do with Kavanaugh, I believe this gives them the opportunity and the time to get this done once and for all. Yeah, I mean, I, I keep thinking, given how great it was to have the party unified for a Supreme Court seat, if the party had been as unified in that first year of the Trump administration on this issue, which was one of his seminal issues on the campaign trail, half of that wall or maybe a quarter of that wall would have been built already. So it's, it's frustrating to a lot of us who push that so hard, Congressman, and I, I applaud you for getting to this now. But, man, we're frustrated. The story today, I think I just saw it today in Arizona, you probably saw it, uh, that a detention facility there was so full of all these people still streaming across the border, can't separate families, so you, they release, but so full, they just had to do a mass release. And th that, that shouldn't be happening, not, not with this president. He doesn't want this stuff. No, and the, the, the battle when it came to Kavanaugh was the rule of law. It's one of the things that makes America the strongest. It breaks down our society. And it... Our communities will not be safe if you can't secure your own borders. Think of the amount of fentanyl or the human trafficking that comes across modern-day slavery. Congressman, they, they do not care. They care more about their, their liberal social construct being foisted on America. Open borders, open markets, you know, redefining gender fluidity, all, whatever, throw it into the mix, whatever it is. It's not about the kids or the rule of law. They don't care about that. It's about redefining America as a borderless place that's no better than any other place on earth. That's what it's about. You are correct, Laura, and that's what this election is about. This is ability to build the wall and enforce the law or didn't have a border with no, with no border whatsoever, with allowing what they've done in San Francisco today, allowing illegals to vote in our elections or when they want to eliminate ICE. I, I would wish every American would spend one day with a Border Patrol agent. I was down in El Paso. This was the first place that the Border Patrol began. They call it the, where the legend all began. If they spend one day with them, I don't think there'd be any question about building this wall and keeping our community oh, no, I mean, this is why safe. This is why we have you there, and this is why, you know, the, the Fox News reports on these. We had just a horrible, one, a horrible example of uh, illegal immigrant crime, a woman raped in New York. But no coverage of this, for the most part, in, in the mainstream media. Zero. And, again, they care about women, but we have a woman raped at the hands of an illegal alien, and just like it never even happened. Congressman, I've got to get you to react to this uh, ever-increasing, rabid, mob-like atmosphere among a very strong, virulent strain of the Democrat Party. Maxine Waters reacted to the mob question. Let's watch. There are people who hear that and they think what you're calling for is physical intimidation, things that fray at the social fabric. That is absolutely untrue. If they would like to take and redefine somehow protest and call it something else, they'll try and do that. Yes, we're shouting out. We have signs. We're saying what we think will get to the public. And we are not saying we're going to kill anybody, we're going to hit anybody, or we're going to cause anybody any harm. That's a lie in the way that they're trying to mm. redefine protests. Congressman, we're out of time, but she said get in their faces. What does that all mean? That means if they were to win the majority, she'd be the chair of financial services, one who asks people to actually cause problems to other individuals. It's the opposite of what we expect from our elected officials. That's why this November is so important, to make a fundamental difference and not let the Democrats take Every over. Everyone's got to get out to vote. Thank you so much, Congressman. CNN spent last night leveling atrociously offensive phrases at Kanye West just because he supports President Trump. Candace Owens, up next. We it's now time for our Seen and Unseen segment, where we explore some of the big cultural stories of the day. Now, in a moment, we'll dive into political American music awards. But first, last Friday's segment with Raymond Arroyo went viral, made international headlines. We call it Fallgate. It became a social media debate. Was it an accident 
or is it a comedy bit? For answers, we're joined by Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor and New York Times bestselling author of the Will Wilder series. Raymond, you... What? A, this is ridiculous. This is we're talking about a, ambulance chaser no, no, lawyers no, no, no. out I'm, there. I'm, I'm, I'm glad I have this moment because I want people to know the reality and the truth of oh, this. God. Tens of millions of people watched this viral video. They saw what happened. Those two gentlemen over there who you haven't met, that's Mr. Biddle and Mr. Billingsworth. Those are my attorneys. You'll meet them oh, after really? the show. Oi, shoot. I want you, I'm going to show the audience the, uh, the video of what happened last week. No. Now, I want you to keep your eye on Laura Ingram's right hand. Watch what happens. Roll the tape. Smile. Do we have it? Wait, yeah, uh, no, the no, angle. Go to the one. edge. Wait, wait, the angle. Go to the edge. Oh, oh. oh. The ACLU used to care about the rights of accused. <laughs> you threw me down in such a cruel fashion. Heartless. My, ha cold my as hand ice. slipped a you little bit. You pushed me no. with great vigor. I saw it. I'm going to slap the, you with a per. Oh, God, this arm. Oh, the plan I'm going to hit is, you what with is a personal firm? injury. What do they take? 40%? They're, they're going to take 50%. Your kids will be paying my personal injury claim when I'm done. Okay, everybody saw this, including James Corden, who tweeted out I can't stop watching this. Members of the audience, they saw it all too. One